I am back for another review of Love After Lockup episode 6. I have been trying to record this review for like three days. <laughs> so I'm just going to get into it. I don't know how long or short this review is going to be. So I'm just going to jump right in. And we are going to start off with Anissa and Jeff. So Anissa goes to the halfway house to try to pick up Jeff. And again, she's met with disappointment because he lets her know that she's not going to be able to pick him up that day. The guy that's um, or whoever he's asking to put the ankle monitor on does not have time to put it on and he cannot leave until they put the ankle monitor on him. So he ends up um, basically letting her know that he's not going to be able to leave the day that she's coming to pick him up. And... He also lets her know that he needs another $100. So she's like, what happened to the $100 I gave you before? And just like, um, it's expensive here. Don't you want me to eat? Do you want me to go hungry? Do you want me to starve? And she's like, you know what? No, I don't. So she's like, how do I get bring you the money? And he's like, just come inside the gate, drop it off at the picnic table, and I'll be able to come get it. You cannot hand it to me. You can't stand inside the gate. You can't come up to the door. So once again, Anissa leaves and she is disappointed. Now we're all, we're going to move on to um, Rachel and Doug. Now, Rachel is still trying, struggling back and forth with Doug, trying to get him to follow the rules. He does not want to follow the rules. He is trying to contact his parole officer to let him know that he wants to go and visit his family. He has not seen them in goodness knows how long. And he's calling and calling and calling. His parole officer is not answering the phone. So he just leaves a message and he's like, look, this is where I'll be. Here's the address in case you need to know. And we're going to leave. And he's basically letting Rachel know, like, look, I'm going to go whether you like it or not. I'm trying to get permission. I can't get in contact with this person. So I'm just going to go and then we'll deal with whatever happens later. Of course, Rachel is against it because she's not a rule breaker. So she just does not think it's a good idea to go. She knows what kind of family he comes from. She knows that he's not supposed to be gone during certain hours. So she does not want him to go, but he goes and he, he wants to go anyway. Um, he gets, he does, um, Doug Jr.'s hair and he asks him to set a timer on his phone so that they'll know when to leave and they go, they hop in the truck and they go. So, um, Rachel and Doug and Doug Jr. are on the way for him to visit his family. When they get halfway there, Doug asks Doug Jr. to get in the front. He gets in the back so he can kind of creep down and surprise his family. When he gets there, his dad is so excited to see him. His dad is like in tears. And from the way that he describes his dad from when he was a little kid saying how big he remember his dad being and how big his hands looked to him when he, were little, when he was little and how small he looks now that he's an adult. Um, I can relate to that, um, because I was kind of the same way when I hadn't seen my mom in a while and then I could tell she had aged and it, it does make you emotional. So while he's there, you know, he's just visiting with his family. Everybody's excited to see him. His sisters are there. His sister Ashley's there. That's the one that was taking care of Doug Jr. before he went to live with Rachel and his other sister Crystal is there now. Um, Ashley brings up that she found some notes under Doug Jr.'s bed that was kind of disturbing and that, you know, that Doug should know about. And Doug Jr.'s like, no, shut up. Don't tell him. If you tell him, I'll never talk to you again. But she tells him anyway. And Doug's like, look, you might not like it, but this stuff is serious. And I, you know, this is stuff I need to know. So in the course of them talking and stuff like that, his sister Crystal is trying to tell him like, look, while you were locked up, like... Ashley wasn't treating your son the best. And Doug's like, I do not want to hear it. She's the only one that stepped forward to take him in. You didn't offer to take him in. So I basically, I just don't want to hear anything from you. They get into it and then they start cussing and yelling. And Doug Jr. is crying and Rachel's hugging him. And Doug is just going off on his sister. And she's like super, you can tell she's really bothered by it. She's just standing at the gate smoking her cigarette. And... She looks as if she's about to cry, but the scene ends. Um, we're going to go to Brittany and Ray. And 
Ray calls Brittany and lets her know that he'll be getting out from the halfway house and that he'll be he'll have the ankle monitor on for two and a half months and that he'll be on house arrest. And Brittany is over the moon because she is so excited to have Ray stuck in her house under her thumb, being there to be to her what she wants him to be. Um, and I don't think he knows that yet, but he will find out once he gets there because she is like too she is way too excited to have him there just kind of like stuck in the house for two and a half months and I keep saying stuck because he's going to be on house arrest so he's not going to be able to do anything and I just I don't know Brittany's whole attitude about him just being stuck in there and not having any freedom once he gets to her house just bugs me but oh goodness gracious so she goes on and she keeps saying, well, you know, I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to have kids and I'm ready for this and I'm ready for that. But I'm not hearing Ray say any of that. So I'm kind of questioning what his goals are for their relationship because he doesn't seem like he's planning that far ahead since he doesn't know her that well. So Brittany seems a little delusional. He asked her if her parents will be there. She says, yes, they'll be there. Um, you'll get to meet them. They're excited. She lied to him because they are not excited to meet him. Her mom does not want to meet him. They're not even excited about her dating someone from prison. So she just blatantly lied to him about that, which I don't understand why she did that instead of just being honest. Now, in the next scene, her sister's doing her makeup and she's explaining that um, he's going to be paroling at her house and that her sister knows that and um, some of her other family members don't know that and she's wondering if her sister will tell her parents and she's hoping that she does not tell her parents but she's not sure and Brittany's explaining to her like you know he'll be here and he won't be able to leave and pretty much everything that she's just so giddy about as far as being able to have him there under her watchful eye day and night and I think that's going to bring out a lot of her trust issues once he gets there but we'll see about that so she leaves because she's preparing to go and pick him up from the halfway house and when she gets there his grandma pulls into the parking lot and when his grandma pulls up his grandma pulls up and she was like cheesing because she cannot wait for her grandson her grandbaby to get out of jail um not jail the halfway house but when she pulls up, Brittany is like, what is she doing here? I'm the one that's supposed to be picking Ray up. He didn't tell me that um, his grandma was coming to pick him up. What is, like, why is she here? So we see Brittany speed walking over to his grandma's truck to ask her, like, what's going on? Why are you here? Um, I'm supposed to be picking up Ray. Like, girl, just calm down. The late, she's known him his whole life. You've only known him for nine months. Like, calm down. You you keep making a big deal out of things that are not a big deal. And I feel like it's just going to blow up in her face. Okay. So we're going to move on to Stan and Lisa. Now, when Lisa wakes up, she's in a hotel. She's still in the hotel. She's taking the wig off. And she's just kind of reflecting back on the argument that her and Stan had the night before. When she... um when they got into the argument over her 22 year old son and I agreed with Stan when he was like no your son can't come here because he's 22 he's an adult I don't know if Stan's met him he's not you know he's still trying to get to know Lisa so to invite her adult son in and he doesn't know her that well I think that's really an, an, an unfair thing to expect from him but she doesn't seem to think so I, I i honestly see how that could be a really bad idea and how it could not go in stan's favor because they could take advantage of him or overpower him or gang up on him or do whatever scam him or whatever you know he he just does not know her well enough to trust her to bring her son in and be you know a good person and make sure he's doing what he needs to do and he doesn't know what her son's dealing with so with that you know, that could have been a conversation that they could have sat and had that night instead of it going the way it went. But I understand kind of that Stan was feeling more so selfish that night because he wanted to just spend time with her and he wasn't expecting her to just get out and go straight into dealing with her family issues. 
So um, she goes to get her hair done. She goes and she gets the same little clips that Nicole got done in her hair. I don't know what that procedure is. So if anybody does know what that is, let me know in the comments because it's really interesting now. Hers didn't turn out like Nicole's because Nicole has longer hair than Lisa. And you know, Lisa, since her hair so short, she didn't have any hair to like cover up where the clips were. So it just, I didn't like it. It didn't look good to me. I mean, if it looked good to her, then a hey, thumbs up. But to me, I just thought that it was going to like cover her actual hair. And it just did it. You could just see the clips, like the way that the girl had them like coming forward and then the style of hair she picked the like really tight waves with the blonde hair it I just did not like it and maybe she maybe that's why she's wearing a headband in some of the other scenes because she knows that the clips are so showing so she wants to be able to cover that up or maybe that's why she has that headband on in the confessional I don't know but I just don't like the hair the wig that Stan gave her with that hat that she put on in the car, that was real cute. That looked way better. But maybe that's not her style. Maybe kind of the little, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to label that look. It's just, I, I just didn't like it. Um, Stan calls her while she's getting her hair done. And he's asking her, you know, like, can they start over? Will she agree to meet with him for dinner? And she says yes. And... She gets there. She's an hour late, but Stan is just blown away. He's just like, look, you look amazing. I love your hair. Your hair is just spectacular. Like, it's, it's everything's just wonderful. And she's, you know, she's on the defense. She's like, look, I have these issues. My kids have issues. I'm trying to be a better mother. It's things I'm trying to work on. I'm not perfect. My life's not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm trying to be a better person. And if you can't help me and support me and kind of you know be there for me through that then this not gonna work and i think stan was with her until she said you're gonna have to come into my world and learn how to do things my way and stan was like yeah no i'm not doing things your way I, he was thinking that but i don't but he knew not to say it i think his response as far as telling her like look I hear you. Let's get back to the house. Let's talk about this in a more comfortable setting. Um, and, you know, we can go from there. We don't have to try to fix all this right now. Let's just go back to my house and then we can talk more about it and figure out what we want to do. So Stan, um, you know, he's convincing her to go back, go back to his house with um, him. And she agrees. So, um we'll see what what happens with that on the next episode okay now the last couple that we're going to get to is deontay and nico so Deont they pick up where they left off with deontay um pick bringing her the dress and bring well bringing her the dresses from i mean to the hair salon where she was getting her hair done and she's still in the back talking to tia and she's like oh baby i want to see you and all this other crap so he brings her the dress and she goes in the back. She changes clothes. She puts it on and Deontay's tongue is like, you know, those cartoons where the, their tongue would roll out and roll across the floor. Then the heart eyes would come out and the heart beating out of the chest. Like that was Deontay in that, in that um, scene. He was like drooling over her when she came out in the red dress. Now the dress was pretty, but I mean to him it was it was like stan said you look amazing you look spectacular <laughs> so um he's going to take her to a bar and that's actually going to be her first time being able to go to the bar because before she got locked up she wasn't 21 so she wasn't able to go into a bar legally and partake and indulge and drink and enjoy herself legally so um you know they get there her friend that was at the hair salon with her she goes with them and they're actually going there to meet Deontay's friend Derek now Derek's asking her some really good questions um he's asking her what are her intentions for his friend and she's like well I mean I love him and can't nobody tell me no different and all that other stuff so to me that was such a bs answer it, it did not answer what he was asking her so Derek caught on to that he was not 
he was not falling for none of that because her friend tried to say he was all she talked about when he was in jail he she loved him and all this other stuff and Derek was like I don't believe neither one of y'all girl I, you know I feel like he wanted to tell her like I don't even know why you talking to me because you lying to me just like she lied to me now Deontay noticed that Nikki was looking around a little bit and he's like who are you looking for and she's like oh well my friend's supposed to be showing up and he's you know Derek's like what friend is this somebody you slept with and then she's kind of like smiling and Derek was like wow and Deontay was like wow are you serious and you know they they try to figure out if it's a girl, a girl or a guy it's a girl of course so, um, you know, she kind of gets irritated. She said, you know what? Y'all all up in my business and stuff like that. I'm uncomfortable. I'm going outside. That's her favorite word. She's uncomfortable. So she goes outside to call the girl to see if she's coming. And she's like, hey, you know, I'm waiting for you. Where you at? And all this other stuff. Deontay follows her outside. And he walks up on her while she's on the phone or while she's ending the phone call. And he was like, who are you talking to? And she was like, oh, I'm just talking to my friend. I'm trying to see if she going to come. And Deontay was like, look, I don't care if it's a male or a female. That is your ex and you being rude. You embarrassing me in front of my, my friend. I'm bringing you here to meet him. And he was like, and you doing all this, but you ain't comfortable spending the night with me. What is it? Why can you not spend a night with me one night? And she's just like, well, I don't feel comfortable, you know. And he said, oh, so you uncomfortable spending one night with me? But you not comfortable with me spending all my money on you? Now, I tell you what. Deontay starting, you know, he's getting frustrated. But he getting frustrated in baby steps. Like, he's, I feel like he's trying to hold back his frustration in order to get what he wants. As far, and that is her coming to his house so that he can, in his mind, put it on her. So that she can, you know, so that he, I guess he can convince her to stay or whatever. and let, Or, you know, or maybe that's his way of showing love. Maybe he just like, look you really not letting me show you that I love you because I honestly feel like that is some people's way of showing you that they love you especially when it comes to men like you turning them away like especially if y'all supposed to be in a relationship he probably feel like dang you supposed to be my girl you my girlfriend you we supposed to be engaged you telling me you love me and all this other stuff but you won't let me be physically affectionate with you so she agrees to come to his place and um he's like cool that's all i asked for so he's like we can go back inside they go back inside and when they get back inside they put on the biggest act <laughs> because when they got in there they was like hey y'all what you know y'all ready to drink and y'all ready to have fun after they just sat out there and was arguing they turned it off as soon as they walked in the door so they get back to the table and they let them know like look you know i guess they talked some more and then they ended up leaving and nicole ends up going back to his house and you know before that even before they get to his house she's telling him like look i will come spend the night with you but when i get there if i feel comfortable i'll sleep in your room if i don't feel comfortable i'll sleep in the guest room which is a lie because she already had her mind made up before she even agreed to sleep in that dad going um guest room she already knew she was sleeping in the guest room she just wanted him to think that she would you know see how she felt when she got there which is bs once again so they get to the apartment and they sitting on the sofa and you know deontay trying to get her to sit on his lap which he did and they all in there kissing and she sit um you know she's sitting up there rubbing all on him and rubbing all on his stomach and rubbing all around where his little crotch area and stuff like that and she's like you know i am attracted to deontay i mean he got some real nice teeth he got some nice eyes or whatever he's a real handsome man and i'm sitting up there like yeah you saying all that but you're not attracted to him so you not only lying to him you lying to yourself because you trying to it's like you trying to make yourself believe those things or you trying to convince the producers that that's how you feel but we all know that that's not how you feel girl like it's just so irritating because if i was his mama or his sister watching this i would be like cussing her out every episode in my head because i would just be sitting up there like girl you lying you playing him you lying to him and then to top it off she tells him of course like i already knew well i'm just gonna go ahead and sleep in the guest room and he was like 
every time she disappoints him you can just see it written all over his face and it's just so annoying because he does give off the impression that he is an actual you know he can't he could be one of the guys that do really have like true um you know like what's the word i'm looking for he does have um good intentions for their relationship and he does just want to spoil her and just live a happy life and love on her and stuff like that but he's just getting mixed up with this trifling behind girl because she she be making me mad anyway she decides to go in a guest room like we all knew she was gonna do and once she gets into the okay first of all she tell Deontay she going into the guest room so he goes into his room and he's telling the producers like look I guess I'm gonna have to just pull Nicole Jr. out the bag I thought I was done with her but you know she here she can't say no so I'm just gonna go ahead and let her have it since I can't let Nicole have it and he you know he kicked the producer out because he like I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it in even though she don't want me to she won't let me get it in so they go to the guest room where Nicole is and she done got comfortable got undressed and she in there walking around with a bra and her drawers on because i'm sitting up there like if you really don't want to be there why even get undressed why you just ain't i mean you ain't bring no you ain't bring no pajamas you ain't bring nothing to sleep in you just sleeping in your bra i don't know that's how some people sleep but if she's so uncomfortable with being there my thing is why is you sleeping with no clothes on you at somebody house that you claim that you're not comfortable being around Ooh, <laughs> this girl be she be making me so she, oh my gosh anyway she ends up calling her ex zach again and i'm talking about she keep calling these people that seem like they ain't do nothing for her while she was in jail and i believe tia was in jail with her so she calls zach and she's you know crouched down in the corner whispering and talking to her and saying how she missed her and all this other all this other stuff i can't wait to see you and then you know kind of end up going to bed and the way that she was looking while she was talking on the phone it was just like she was just like a little kid that was like sneaking candy or a, a teenager that was in their room sneaking on the phone because they know that their parents that took their phone and they won't post it like she was just acting so childish in that moment and my thing is if you knew that was the case why did you even agree to spend a night over there because you you know what she agreed to spend a night because she knew if she didn't that he was going that her little free ride that he's giving her with all these gifts and and being there for her and all this other stuff is going to come to an end because she really playing him and that, and it really pisses me off to see that because she just using him and it's like it's like when people try to say that you was okay it's like if somebody lied to you and then when you find out that they're lying they like no you were stupid for believing me i hate when people do that because if i trust you if i consider you a friend if you've led me to believe that we have this relationship and then you lie to me and I don't know that you're lying, but then I find out down the line and then you're like, oh, well, well, you stupid for believing me for lying. Like, what kind of mess is that? You're not taking no accountability for just being a liar <laughs> and that you actually taking advantage of somebody that genuinely felt like y'all had a friendship or genuinely felt like y'all were in a relationship or whatever. And I feel like. I feel like that's kind of how people look at Deontay because what I feel like a lot of people don't realize that they're living this and we're watching it in third part like we're watching it from the outside looking in he's actually experiencing this experiencing this on the show so it's like when people are I feel like people look at him and they like oh he's so stupid for getting played but it's like don't try to act like a lot of us that don't watch this show like a lot of us that's been out in the dating world and they actually actively date or actually have um actively have dated in the past like everybody have the ability to be played because everybody just not genuine and everybody just not honest so i feel like he's seeing stuff and he's kind of trying to take it slow because i don't feel like he's in denial i just feel like he's so pressed to make it work or he's so pressed to try to 
um, you know, kind of get her back to where she was when she was in jail, probably writing him, telling him she loves him and all this other stuff. I just feel like he's trying to really get back to that point. But little by little, she's showing her true colors, but he's not trying to just jump straight out there and be like, you know what? I'm cutting it off because it's because people always will say what they would do in that situation. But that's not always the case. You learn from experience and sometimes it takes you getting hurt more than what's in order for you to learn. So I actually do kind of feel bad for Deontay because she is playing him. And, you know, maybe it's maybe because I have a um, 15 year old stepson or maybe it's because I have a brother or maybe I'm thinking from that aspect because I feel like if this if I was watching this and it was my brother or if I was watching this and it was my one of uh, my sons or something like that like I would be pissed off I wouldn't be sitting up there like boy you stupid you let her play like I would be mad at her but at the same time that's just my perspective or whatever I'm putting myself in Deontay's shoes because it's hard for me to put myself in Nicole's shoes because I'm just not the type of person that thinks it's okay to just be using somebody and using somebody and knowing that you just doing them dirty by talking to your exes and just lying and just leading somebody on because I don't think it's safe to be playing with people emotions like that like people die over stuff like that I ain't saying it's going to get to that point, but I watch a lot of crime shows and people do die over stuff like that. Shoot, people die for less. So, I mean, I just feel like she really playing with fire. I'm not saying that he going to go crazy and, and be on snapped <laughs> because she playing him. I'm not even saying it's going to go that far, but this this particular couple just makes me so mad because she's just so careless about how she's treating him but it happens so often though but let me get off of this because Nicole giving because I'm, I'm I feel like I'm getting a headache just even thinking about her <laughs> like how she treated him like I don't know maybe I don't have that sympathy for Anissa and Jeff because I feel like Anissa's so old and she's actually had a decent relationship before that she chose to let go because she was quote-unquote bored or I don't feel the same way for Britney because I feel like Britney is being really naive in how she feels and she's and they really haven't even gotten to actually interact so with that it's kind of like uh I really can't comment or I feel like I'm not as invested as much into Britney and Ray because they we haven't actually seen them together and then with Rachel and Doug I feel like it's a whole bunch going on with them but I feel like I need to see a little bit more when it's dealing with them because I don't feel it's if Doug is using her, it's not so blatant right now from what we've seen, because right now he just seems a little more so just hard headed and a little controlling and got some family issues. But it's not as blatant as just Nicole using Deontay and with Stan and Lisa, like we still don't we still trying to figure out the ins and outs of what's really going on with Stan and Lisa. Like, we haven't had a chance to see her family. We haven't had a chance to, like, hear any of Lisa's, um, you know, anything she's doing as far as using Stan. She's mainly been focused on talking about her kids. So, when it comes to Deontay and Nikki, like, Nicole is just so... She's just so forward about using him and letting him... Um, and stringing him alone so maybe that's just what irritates me the much the most as far as like de dealing with them so I don't know I'm just waiting for this Friday like everybody else so that we can see what is gonna go on because I'm ready to see her meet his mom in that next daggone episode and I'm ready to see Deontay go off like we did in that super trailer at the beginning of this season <laughs> I need, I, you know what? I think I need to go back and watch the super trailer because I also want to see why Rachel gonna be crying talking about throwing that ring out in the ocean. So, um, you know, we'll be back next Friday, and I know it took me a couple days to get this review out, but you know, I'm still trying to figure things out as far as like with this new camera that we have and the microphone is great. The camera quality is um, much, much, much better, but you know everything comes with this issue so 
I have this, um, we have this Sony ZV-1 camera and it had been overheating. So I had to like kind of do a little bit of research to figure out why the camera was overheating. And I think I was able to fix the issue because I was able to actually get through this whole review without the camera cutting off. Cause this is actually like my third or fourth time trying to record this review <laughs> for love after lockup over the past three days <laughs> so um i'm just glad i was able to get it up today please like this video share this video with somebody else if you like this review um subscribe the button is down below um it just takes one second to click that subscribe button so that you can see my love after lockup reviews every week um and other than that, y'all have a good night and I will see y'all next time for this next episode of Love After Lockup. All right, see y'all.